last week on The Club. My name is Matthew Dolvadova. I play for the Australian Boomers and I'm a big Collingwood supporter. It's just a way of life, I guess. It's not just a football thing. I think it's special to be a part of that. Today, I'm gonna to go into the Peter McCallum Cancer Institution and find out about some of the great things that they're doing here. Thank you very much. To see what some people are, are able to fight and the adversity they're able to overcome, it, it inspires you and it gives you that bit of perspective. He kicked five in round three and he's got four tonight. And they might be home, the Blues. What an upset. It turns the season on its head, doesn't it? Let's go faster. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> I think before I had kids, you know, I was all about footy and put footy first uh, and very selfish as a, as a player. I think now having kids and, and seeing a different light and seeing footy in a different angle, um, it's not all about me, it's certainly not all about footy, uh, it's not the be all end all um, and there's certainly more important things out there um, to deal with in life. If I have a bad game or, or an ordinary week, you know, I've only got to walk in the door and get a big cuddle and kiss from them and it's all forgotten, you know, and then you move on ready for the next week. <laughs> I grew up um, a little country town called Lexton, which is about 50k from Ballarat. Uh, I grew up on a farm there, played footy for Lexton. That was pretty much all we did on, on weekends. Um, sisters would play netball and we would play footy. So I started there when I was eight. I think when I got to maybe 14, I really had a, a big growth spurt. And as I got bigger and taller, uh, I would play under 16s in the morning, leave my gear on and then play seniors in the afternoon. Um, so that went on for a couple of years, which was fun. had a year uh, in the VFL for North Ballarat uh, and then got rookie listed at Melbourne. Falls for Robertson, squeezes it through, they're going to get a goal here, Tony. Now that man Jolly has just come off the interchange bench, yep. the move was made, Brad Green went off, Jolly came on and just jogged up there into the forward pocket and the ball hit him on the chest. He's just stood there and said, how easy is this? Oh, I think first year, you know, I, I was just more excited and getting on the field, you know, getting a game, getting on the field. And I was just wrapped, you know, just to get out there and, you know, think, bloody hell, this is what it's like. Um, yeah, so it was exciting. We all know, uh, you know, how footy gets in Melbourne, how it's just huge. It's religious to people and if you can't handle it or if you have too much of it, you're getting burned out. So that was me towards the end of 2004. Um, you know, I was, I was over footy just in general, couldn't get away from it. So I moved into Sydney and just, I suppose, training and playing and, and not having any media attention at all. You know, even to the point where if you'd win, you'd get half a page of the paper somewhere. That was it. So it was great to, to then go and do your stuff at work and then as soon as you'd finish, go home and switch off. You not have to think about footy. Um, so it certainly taught me the balance and, and, and learned how to, to get the balance right. So yeah, I really enjoyed the five years there in Sydney and um, you know, certainly made me into the playroom today. Well, my first daughter, she's five now, and, and so we ha obviously had her up there. And, and my second daughter, who's three, um, my wife developed postnatal depression after her. And I suppose the two years up there with no family support made it really, really hard for her, and she really, really struggled. So yeah, once the last game finished, I sat down with my wife Dee and um, yeah, we just spoke about we need to need to come home to, to sort it out, to have some support and people around us that could help. Yeah, Mick, uh, he just said, you know, what what do you what do you bring to us? You know, what what do you see that we lack, and what do you, what can you bring? And you know, I just said, look, I. I really enjoy the contest. I, you know, I, I, uh, I love the hard stuff. You know, getting in, crashing and bashing, and 
doing all that stuff and I, I really fight for, for my position. Um, and I think that appealed to him, you know, which was which was great. It's exactly I didn't have to invent anything. Um, yeah, so luckily the, the deal got done. Well, I suppose before I got traded to Collingwood, I, I knew by just the list that we had and the potential that we had, um, and the young guys coming through, that the window of opportunity was was wide open. And um, yeah, it was exciting for me to to walk in and knowing that there's a great chance that we may be playing in a grand final. Didac in a one-on-one, -on -one, and then Lee Brown bursting forward, and then with a ball burst at a full forward, it's bounced the wrong way! Oh, a magician! I just remember, yeah, I think three quarters of the way through, I, I thought, you know, we, we're getting close here, we're, we're, we're a big chance. And he comes, and he's got this one, puts it through. Well, start thinking about the banner for the grand final. Ball comes across to Blair. Will it get to Dybak? Oh, good work by Clark. Dybak is on. Dybak goes in. There's no repeat of Shaw. He gets the goal. And jolly decisively. Pendlebury swings it down towards half forward. Side bottom. Let's it bounce. Runs onto it. Thomas is on, uses him as a decoy, comes back to the middle, and jolly! Melbourne to the Swans, to Collingwood. This one is working back, it's beautiful. It doesn't get better than that. Well, I suppose not having kids, you can get out of bed whenever you want. <laughs> but unfortunately, they're the alarm clock. Um, so I'm, I'm lucky game day. So my, my wife gives me a little bit of a sleep in and, and takes the kids for the morning. So And they try and be quiet. Go, Maggie. And I'll get up and you know, have brekkie with them and play with them. And I really don't think about footy until I jump in the car and get to the game. So they're great for me. Let's go. Hi, Dad. I got the first See you soon. Uh, well, I suppose everyone was disappointed after last week's game. You know, we had to obviously dissect it all on the Monday and with Bucks and everyone had to take their medicine and, and cop it and, and we did. What I want to get out of the game is firstly to play well, to play my role. I'll speak with Harbs at the start of the game, so see uh, See what he wants to do, and then uh, I'll get stuck into Trent West and see if I can get the job done. So we expect that um, Giles will win most of his hitouts tonight. Um, obviously, a Premiership ruckman with experience on his side, it's got to be aggressive against West and, and really. Um, you know, flex his muscles early to get on top. Uh, he's, it's a critical role tonight. I mean, the midfield battle tonight's going to be massive. Whoever wins that clearance battle is probably going to win the game. So, what, Joel's is a massive part of that. So he's got to he's got to flex his muscles early against uh, against West and really get it, get stuck in. Jolly in the middle. West the opponent. This time Jolly with the knock, but Seld with the clearance, went to ground with the ball, it spills loose. Collingwood go deep and long. Cloak was there. In right. Scarlet got bundled off the ball. Desperate gold sack. Out of the pack. Something out of nothing. Someone's got to go and get it for the cats. They're all looking at it. Gold sack swooped in. Kick around the body. One-handed attempt by Cloak. Jolly picks it up. Handball back inside. Thomas for the goal. Got it. Three in a row for the pies. Now Beams around the corner, great kick to side bottom. He takes Hunt on, handball over the top to Sinclair. He'll kick inside 50. Tarrant can go over the top of Taylor and takes the mark. Collingwood by 51. 
Williams has found space here for Elliott. Marked it low, little kick over the top to Goldsack, got it back up. Oh boy, they messed that up. Second opportunity, penalty. He said, where are you, Goldsack? He said, I'm here. Gave it off to Cloak. Cloak around the corner, continues to kick a goal in the games he plays. As we tick down the final seconds, Collingwood have eked out win number 12 for the year and they advance temporarily to the top of the ladder. Yeah, we're halfway through the season. I think we've got um, seven or eight games to go to, to final, so I, I believe that our window of opportunity is still wide open. You know, we're, we're certainly a big chance to, to win it. If we concentrate and, and really, you know, pinpoint down and, and have a four quarter effort, you know, we've proved that no one can beat us. I've been lucky that I've got a body that hardly gets injured, you know, touch wood. That, um, yeah, I, I managed to play all those those games, and certainly I, I was injured, but managed to, to deal with them and, and just play through it, you know, deal with the pain, um, just try and put it aside and get on with it. Um, but I think the older I'm getting, the injuries that I have tend to, to hang around a little bit longer. So um, yeah, I, I enjoy it and I tend to come good as the next week comes around. So uh, yeah, just keep going. Well, I'd like to be remembered as a triple premiership player. That'd, that'd be nice to hang above the mantelpiece. But I think I'd just like to be remembered as a guy who had a crack, you know, who, who there's nothing fancy about me, just someone who competed really hard and, you know, would, uh, would die for the team. Um, yeah, and just, you know, be a, a good person and a great dad and, you know, a great husband. Still to come on the club. Harry O takes the art world by storm. He said if I don't paint, make him look very handsome, he knows where my studio is. We meet the women of Collingwood. I think it's important that women know that if they choose to come into this environment, that they've got an opportunity to have a go. And Alex Fasolo joins us in the studio. Fasolo protects the drop of the ball and took a very good mark in the end. 